Mucha kanye name nama emisi zao fo aga economic affairs finance um, local government plus uh, laba be tuke is all be a free state the same but what was yeah. nice is that the premiers themselves and actually the MECs who are not MECs of agriculture, they started realizing the economic impact on this thing. So we think there'll be a really good support. And House of Traditional Leaders have really also been very helpful on the advocacy part. So we think that uh, outreach is a snare to make sure that everybody is on board. No, Siabulela, but this. Let's hope we can keep this in good time. Yep. Yes. Akbare Brian, do you find it? Voorzitter, goed in self. Ek is baie goed, man. Dan is ek blij om te hoor. Maar die somer moet nou kom. <laughs> ek is ja, nou die koud ja, kruid. Ja, is baie koud in die kap. He. Is baie koud in die kap. <laughs> en Bloemfontein ook. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Minister, I saw you were in the Free State, um, and yes. it was one of our coldest days. Um, it was, eh? But, but yes, I, I really, Chairperson, if you would allow me, I, I really do hope that um, that your visit here and that the MEC and the Premier's um, commitment to to actually, you know, fighting this FND um, really goes a long way, because at this stage, as you know, Minister, uh, the Free yeah. State is not even supposed to have FMD. And, and it's at a stage where, where really it is it is impacting our farmers, not only commercial but our small scale mm. and our substance farmers as well. And it it really is a crisis. It is. No, uh, thank you uh, for that, Dr. Redred. Dabezi ta kosingur. Tevumkur. Ya pila ringos. Ya pila ringos. Jalo pe na jamas vurekse. Oh, such a bull out banning course, sitting I in your cannon, hang on, and cursing echo. I water in cursing any on a shed a shadow. Ah, Oh, Honorable members, uh, let's take this opportunity to welcome you to our uh, first uh, uh, meeting on this third term. Therefore, I want uh, to greet the Honorable Minister, the Deputy Ministers, as well as uh, the uh, DG, Dr. Uh, Ramasodi, the heads of departments and the leadership of the entities who are present uh, on this virtual meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, and our esteemed guests from the media. Uh, good morning. Huyamore, Molweni, Dumela. We trust that you are well and in high spirits as uh, we uh, come to draw on this uh, Women's Month. Uh, which we are nearing to its closure. We are therefore cognizant of the many women, such as Annette Stein, who was part uh, of our uh, portfolio committee and has been in uh, this portfolio committee uh, since the early days of uh, Stone Caesar uh, as the chairperson in the fourth uh, parliament. Uh, we are cognizant of uh, the role uh, women have played and who continue to shape the destiny of our nascent democracy. 
Honorable members, before we consider the agenda items before us today, the Agricultural Products Amendment Bill, the, the uh, CS presentation and the adoption of our last minutes, we would like to spend a few minutes reflecting on the role of women in agriculture and in rural development. 75% of women's, or rather of the world's poor, live in rural areas, and most are involved in farming, as confirmed by the World Bank, FAO, and IFAD in 2009. In the 21st century, agriculture remains a fundamental tool to economic growth. Um, poverty alleviation and environmental sustainability. According to the International Fund for Agricultural Development of 2009, three out of every four people in developing countries live in rural areas, and most of them depend directly or indirectly on agriculture for their livelihoods. In many parts of the world, women are the main farmers or producers, but their role remains largely unrecognized. We must also take cognizance of the fact that despite their significant contribution to agricultural production, women are significantly underrepresented in the area of decision-making. We wish to make this call during this Women's Month to ensure gender equality in our agriculture and agro-processing value chains, especially in the areas of decision-making and management. Honorable members, today Recording we have in progress. for us the Agricultural Products Amendment Bill for consideration. Given our introductory remarks, the significant question that comes to mind is how significant a portion of those consulted in the process of bringing this bill before us today were constituted by women stakeholders. Honorable members, I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the leadership role of the Honorable Minister Mamutogo Tideza in advancing the agenda of women's development within this portfolio. It goes without saying that we must build upon the many sterling achievements and take these to new heights. The Agricultural Products Standards Act number 119 of 1990, provides for control over the sale and export of certain agricultural products, control over the sale of certain important imported agricultural products, control over the related products, and for matters connected therewithin. Honorable members, Consequent to the legal opinion from the chief state law advisor regarding the concept of management control systems being ultra averse, the Agricultural Product Standards Amendment Bill was drafted to address the legality of the concept. The concept of management control system deals with the method of production and the accompanying labeling claims associated therewith. Honorable members, the current act had to be reviewed to accommodate different inspection and auditing methods, amongst other things, to ensure proper application and enforcement of the act. The Agricultural Product Standards Amendment Bill 
aims to strengthen the regulatory framework for agricultural production, health and food security and food safety of certain agricultural products. Such a regulatory framework promotes food safety, creates an enabling environment for increased and sustainable production. The bill was pre-certified by the Chief State Law Advisor in 2017 and in 2020, respectively. Honorable members, the bill was subjected to the Socioeconomic Impact Assessment System. I am especially pleased that the previously disadvantaged communities will benefit from reliable and quality products as opposed to inferior products which were being sold to them. In addition, honorable members, equal entry and access to market as a result of harmonized legislation, removal of barriers to entry, and a strengthened regulatory framework are all welcomed. The focus of the bill, honorable members, on the sale of organically produced products is growing uh, in growing market internationally that contributes significantly to export revenue in a food and beverage sector. I am especially pleased that new entrants will be afforded the opportunity to enter into a market which will recognize their method of producing food without the use of agrochemicals, which was historically only limited to certain producers. The potential for job creation is significant, and we welcome the dull red efforts to expand this section. Honorable members, the social and environmental impact assessment system presentation sets out to examine the impact in areas of social cohesion, food security and food safety, uh, and economic growth and investment, economic inclusion, that being employment creation and equity, as well as the environmental sustainability. The latter honorable members provides for regulation of methods of production that will result in the adoption of methods which will limit the use of agrochemicals, which will ensure environmental sustainability over a longer period. Honorable members, the minutes of our last meeting uh, table will be tabled for adoption before uh, we conclude this uh, uh, session today. Uh, raise, uh, and they have also raised the number of questions of strategic importance. We would do well to revisit some of these questions and ensure that the issues are adequately addressed before we move for its adoption. I would want to therefore, honorable members, invite uh, the department in uh, presenting uh, the presentation uh, before us today. Uh, which uh, will be focusing on the Agricultural Products Standards Act. Uh, we invite the Honorable, Mem uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Umamuti Deza, to uh, give opening remarks before she may be excused as she has other uh, businesses of the uh, day to attend to. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and also members of the committee and our senior officials present. I must say that indeed we are appreciative of the role that you, as the leader of the committee, with your members 
have played in helping us to navigate a number of uh, policy as well as regulatory issues that we have to deal with from time to time. You've raised very incisive questions that you had asked us to go back and look at. And even today, one of the issues being the Women's Month you have also raised with us as the department is how we must, even though you posed it as a question, but I take it that it was also an advice that at all times we need to make sure that we take into consideration the interests of the most vulnerable, particularly women farmers and women uh, agri-entrepreneurs in the processes of the department to actually bring effect the issues of women empowerment into reality so that they too, they can have a voice in what we are doing. Uh, Chairperson, you have articulated what the bill seeks to achieve, and uh, you've given the background of where we started with this process and where we are now. So in order for us not to uh, waste the time, I would request, Chairperson, through your permission, that the department uh, then tables the presentation to yourselves. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mahmoud Deza. Can we request the officials of the department to proceed and present the bill? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, honorable members of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development. Um, the presentation today will be made by uh, the, Sarah, the acting DDG within agricultural production and biosecurity and disaster management. And um, that presentation um, will cover the aspects that Honorable Minister had alluded to. On the platform, we also have got colleagues that come from the very same branch. Uh, starting with the director who's responsible for this and the Demakafona and the other colleagues who will be able to respond to some of the issues during the uh, engagement. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. With your permission, we um, call upon that day, Saraka, to give the presentation. Thank you very much, um, uh, to, uh, Minister, DG, and uh, honorable members, uh, Chairperson, and honorable members of this August Portfolio Committee. We are ready to present, except that the uh, whole, the, we are, the system does not enable us to share the screen. If the administration could assist, um, we will be able to share the presentation. Thank you. or even if it's shared, it's shared from the side of the administration, that will still work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you can have it on the slide mode. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Honorable Chairperson, uh, members of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development. We presenting to you this to yourselves in the August Committee the bill, the Agricultural Products Standard Act, uh, which has been um, uh, which is being amended or which is a draft and a bill for its amendment. There are key three key reasons that necessitated this amendment. But before I get to that, I just need to also clarify, emphasize the importance of this bill in the day to day. Uh, life of the agricultural sector in the country. It is this very bill that makes that uh, enables this country to be able to export the, the, the agricultural products, uh, your foods, and, and all other products. It is this bill that ensures that it, it goes into the, as far as scientific determination of the quality of fruits and, uh, and, and pro agricultural products that we are proud as a country of. This very bill is responsible for the, uh, controlling the quality as well of products that are imported into this country. It is this bill has got far-reaching uh, 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 responsibilities, and this got far-reaching. Uh, uh, it's got a, a, a very wide reach in that it takes care of everything agricultural produced and uh, things that members, some of the members, may not be aware. 
as far as vinegar, as far as uh, edible ice, ice cream, as far as bread, as far as uh, uh, all the other uh, 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 items that uh, we have in our grocery list. It is this bill that sets the parameters and sets the requirements, sets the standards and the of quality and as well as the food safety. Now, uh, this bill, uh, if you can just with the previous slide quickly, which are the main reasons when, thank you, management uh, uh, control system was not uh, catered for when this bill was enacted in 1990. So in a, with the changing environment, obviously things started changing and we wanted to be able to audit uh, the system that uh, the production systems with which we would be able to regulate uh, new entrances into the space, such as uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson has mentioned, organic production, for instance. So if you were to then OD, uh, 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 regulate organic production, it means we should be able to, have, to, to audit the production practice thereof. And uh, at the time when we wanted to do that, we were alerted that uh, the, we are acting beyond uh, the scope of the act, which the lawyers or legal people would call it uh, uh, ultra virus. The, we are also, uh, we, the bill does not, the act, the current act does also, also does not take into account or does not explicitly or sufficiently express the, the mandate of the act as far as auditing of uh, uh, systems is concerned. So we've got to have this included in. And lastly, this bill makes provisions for appointment of different assignees. One of the known assignees, the assignee known to this committee, is the uh, PPECB, uh, Perishable uh, Products Export Control Board. Without this bill, this act, uh, Agricultural Products Under Act, you would not have PPCB playing the, the uh, export control role that it plays. PPCB itself becomes uh, it's established for cold chain management, but it is brought into this space by the provisions of this bill. So this bill makes provision for appointment of assignees. One of them is is PPCB, the other one is SAMIC, uh, which is about the meat in uh, the abattoirs, the meat production uh, the standards at the current abattoirs in the country. Uh, uh, so, so, so when this uh, assignees said uh, uh, are appointed, other additional assignees were appointed uh, because we realized that with the changing environment and the landscape, there was a need to add additional assignees onto the space and also with the the compensation of employees uh, budget uh, 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 constraints, we thought it was going to be better if we introduced other players in the, uh, in the form of assignees. And when we've, after doing that, we were also made aware that the setting of the fees by this, uh, this assignees was not uh, expressed sufficiently in the act. Hence, the, you see the bullet setting of fees. Second, next slide. The main objectives of the bill, as we, uh, we may have gone through this, basically the regulatory framework of uh, uh, agricultural production, health and food safety. Production meaning those that are referred to the auditing, the production systems and related. And then also for the auditing, and uh, this I spoke of, and prom uh, to promote the participation of factors, this is which is very key. The, the transparency that we brought into the, the act is to enable those that uh, might be affected by the, 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 the work of the assignees as they would have been appointed uh, by minister in terms of provisions of this act. They, they needed, in, in the past, when they built the, the, the act, the current act, uh, it made no provision for, for transparency in as far as the setting of the fees is concerned. So we've brought this in to ensure that uh, any assignee that charges uh, inspection fees has got to be transparent and those fees must be set in a cost recovery a manner. So it's not about that uh, uh, for it, it, should, it should cap for their, their, their interest of trying to make uh, more money or, uh, out of the process of, of government. Next slide. Here we're just going to quickly uh, go through uh, what insertions have been made into the current bill, on the current act and in the bill. This section, I'll, I'll refer, uh, of interest uh, in the interest of time will be this part. The part as, as to why, why are we substituting the, 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 the uh, after, after having identified this gap, 
that uh, so that there was no provision for different methods of uh, enforcement of, under this act. Method of enforcement would mean uh, what is it that we a part of that is uh, the audit. By audit, we means we, we mean we need to come and make sure that when you say you are producing organically, we need to be able to come and check that indeed your production is uh, complies with the, the set uh, parameters for organic production. So in the current act, if we were to do that, it would have only uh, been by means of going physically to the, the site. And you could imagine the country being this vast, this, this what might not be a practical. So we then introduced the, 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 this part, which would then mean it's a, a, a better defines audit. And as it's, it's been broadened, it then, it then would make it easier for the different role players, like I said, to be able to, to, to see what is it and, it, and also because it would be a transparent process. But other than that, it, would, it, it allows us to have a different method other than just physical inspection of the production. So we, should, we would be able to, 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 to have other means uh, which are, still become legal of uh, finding out or of, 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 of um, enforcing the very act. Next slide. Again here, it, uh, there had to be a clearer interpretation. Uh, basically, when uh, this uh, department, because of the, the, the obviously what happens with the change in government, so this is a normal, uh, I don't even have to waste time on this one. We, as and when the department's name changes, we then had to change and also we had to clear the, uh, make it clear distinctions in the act of the roles and the, 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 of, of the minister and the director general. Next slide. This one also, the, the, like I spoke of earlier, the management control system. In this specific case, it will also mean it, it just clarifies what the control system is. And then it, uh, it helps that the, the other labels, like we are already having situations of uh, uh, vegetarian wars. And wars is basically uh, the name that is known to be uh, of meat. Now there's vegetarian wars. So we don't want our people saying, extra healthy measuring, something like that. Uh, so, so we are clearing that definition to ensure that uh, nobody can just claim extra healthy measuring as an example or, or, or whatever deceptive, uh, deceptive labeling um, uh, uh, might be uh, uh, being used. So, so we, we are eliminating any pos possibility or potential of uh, unscrupulous uh, uh, companies to use deceptive uh, labeling. Thank you, next slide. Again, we needed to harmonize our definition um, with uh, the of cell. Cell uh, uh, it gets defined broadly. Cell means presenting it. If I'm sitting there at the street with the vegetables on my on the table, I'm selling. But also, if I'm bringing them to you to deliver them at your shop, I'm selling. So the definition of cell has got to be uh, was found to be to have limitations. And then we then had to amend it to broaden it to ensure that uh, it's broadened enough to cover all means and ways of presenting goods or of exchanging goods, uh, which would then be sell. And uh, here we needed it to also align with the uh, Food Disinfectant and Cosmetics Act, which is uh, the act that is administered by the Department of Health. So because the, this uh, uh, regulation, that when you speak of food safety in the country, you cannot do that without talking about, without uh, concurrence of the Department of Health, because that's where we call uh, agriculture and uh, uh, health, they come together as far as the regulations of food safety in the country. Next slide. Yes. This one is an assignee. I spoke uh, at length as to what an assignee is. Uh, the designation of assignee for the management control. So it allows an opportunity for us to have, um, uh, for minister to appoint another assignee. Uh, assignees, like I said, uh, these uh, companies, uh, they may be uh, uh, private, they may be a parastatal, which government might appoint specifically to, to take care of certain sections of the act. There might be different reasons why a department would opt for an assignee uh, instead of uh, performing the functions itself. 
So this, uh, uh, we're bringing comfort in the event of uh, the need arising for us to be able to appoint an SINE whose sole purpose becomes uh, that of uh, the, 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 the uh, 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 quality, basically the designation of appropriately qualified SINE. In this specific case, it will be for the management control system. At the moment, we do not have this assignee for management control system. As I have identified it as one in the beginning, as one of the things that we had to bring into this bill. So now with this section that is inserted, we are able to, if minister sees the need, feels the need to appoint, that will be quite uh, uh, catered for by this, this act, uh, this bill once it's enacted into law. So this is basically bringing that into a broadening and also allowing us the possibility should they need a rise. Next. I spoke of uh, transparency and accountability of setting of fees. Um, these are the fees that the assignee would, would have to set the cost recovery uh, fees. So, so we've had uh, uh, going and you know, a lot of uh, court challenges in the current uh, um, additional assignees that we've appointed, the, the way challenged, a lot of challenges, and the uh, uh, High Court ruled that uh, the process of uh, uh, this assignee setting uh, inspection and related fees has got to be one cost recovery, and of course, has got to be uh, uh, transparent. The executive officer referred to here, this is the director responsible, the registrar, if you like, some some ex call a registrar, some call it national executive officer, some call ex call an executive officer. This is an employee of the department who is designed or designated by minister uh, for the administration of the bill. So so this was basically uh, when whenever we see executive officer, we must see it uh, in that light. So 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 this is uh, uh, again the stakeholders would be able to participate and uh, challenge the fees that the a, a, a assignee that would have been appointed in terms of section two above. Uh, if the, the, the assignee has to set uh, uh, fees, they've got to, uh, uh, they, there's a transparency or we've enabled a, a, a provision where they've got to be uh, uh, to be transparent and they can be asked questions as to how they, they arrive at the fees that they would be imposing. Next slide. Again, you, the members would have already noticed that there's more transparency as far as uh, the, the, the new insertions in, in this act are concerned. This is because uh, uh, this, like I said, this act has a, a wide uh, coverage uh, as far as the sale of uh, uh, agricultural products. And we obviously, this is the food that uh, uh, agricultural products uh, control. It means food control in the main. So the production thereof and the importation thereof so, so this is uh, this act has got a far uh, a, a, a wide reach, rather. So, so that's why there's the need for the transparency uh, that it be uh, there be uh, uh, sufficient transparency with everything that, as far as this act is concerned. So, this basically the amendment that will be made would be the insertion of the section one a uh, one paragraph a of the principal act. So, in the act will be. Include, this is what uh, it will look like. Basically, also ensuring that the executive officer, this is the director or official of government appointed by the minister, that after consideration of comments, after they, they've gone out for comments received in terms of this, they will be in, will in writing uh, uh, as in writing uh, approve the business plan. This business plan is that of the assignee. So, so the assignee has got to put a business plan that this is how they're going to conduct inspections, this is how they're going to do one, two, three, and whatever they do, the executive officer's responsibility is reinforced and reinforced so that uh, uh, the, the, so it's fortified, actually, my, my, my bad, it's fortified such that it then is able to control the process uh, of, of for the process that the assignee would be setting uh, uh, inspection fees, for instance, and there will be that transparency. And then the alternative methods I spoke of earlier, which is a method of auditing or inspection. At the moment, inspection, like I said, the current act says Yuma inspectors would come and then take a sample, inspect the products, take a sample, whatever, whatever is that they want to. But that is the only way uh, in which inspection can happen. Now, with audits in place, 
it means uh, uh, they has to, they, we have to come up with other alternative ways of achieving the same uh, end goal uh, without necessarily having to subject the product to the only inspection. So audit uh, uh, is also uh, uh, catered for, and like I said earlier, it was not necessarily sufficiently expressed in the current act. So thank you. These are the stakeholders that um, play um, a, a, an important role in the space. Uh, apologies for this one. What is the uh, 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 poems and uh, uh, being the main uh, apples and pears uh, 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 association? Uh, so, so we uh, this uh, it's a typo. We, uh, in the other version, we had it uh, explained. Just apologies for that. This is the association for the. Uh, Pears and apple producers. Otherwise, these are the stakeholders that uh, were consulted when uh, this bill was, uh, was, was being worked on. And I must also indicate that uh, uh, this work that we're doing now with the August Committee, we have done it with the other August Committee in the, uh, the, the previous administration, but we are still uh, at your service. And if this August Committee wants us to do some further work, we are more than ready to do that. Next slide. Thank you very much, uh, uh, DG. Uh, back to you. We submit, Chair. Thank you, DJ. And that is Rahe for the presentation. Um, honorable members, there we have uh, our presentation from the department. I uh, also uh, have uh, our uh, parliamentary uh, legal advisors on standby. Uh, who uh, may uh, be available to also give input on the bill as uh, put by the department. Let us uh, take uh, uh, their input and then we can uh, have uh, questions of clarity uh, on uh, the uh, uh, presentations. Uh, Major Kimelo, would you want to speak uh, to the presentation as put by the department? Mepa Pralutz. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, honorable members. Um, Chair, as far as I can see and from the department's uh, presentation, our, um, our office is in agreement as it is. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any input to Memelo? You covered? Thank you, Professor. Nothing from my side. Thank you. That's a honorable members. Uh, we'll then uh, open this for questions of clarity and discussion on the presentation. Um, honorable um, Carbeth. Thank you, Chair. Let me welcome the presentations and the remarks made by the Minister, as well as your good self. Chair, I, I don't know if I've missed anything. I just want to check for, uh, what was the conclusion on the issue of the traditional leadership on this regard. That is the only question, but otherwise the, the presentation is clear and straightforward. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Tabe. Uh, Honorable Ndade uh, Masipa. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Minister and colleagues and the officials from the department. Chair, I think the presentation was quite clear. Um, 
What I just want to make sure, Chair, is that um, obviously this is a standard practice, especially with the, uh, the exporters um, in the fruit industry. Um, with uh, obviously they have got their own assignee, as um, the presenter has uh, indicated. I think the question for me is that the cost implications, uh, because uh, obviously, you know, um, it's going to come at a cost, you know, to really roll it out to all the sectors and especially the emerging farmers. I think really key is to really understand as to how the department is planning, one, to ensure that uh, it's not as costly uh, to the emerging farmers and also, you know, looking at uh, how they're going to really ensure that uh, uh, they comply to really end up having the access to the market. Because uh, one, this bill, while it's good, it might also, you know, endanger uh, the those that cannot uh, comply due to reasons being financial capacity or not having the logistical, you know, uh, strong logis logistical support to do what they need to do is that uh, obviously then they're going to be cut out. And the, the the last thing, Chair, remember when you start now do when you start now implementing this because this is now on the farm in the processing in the making. So now what you're going to have you go to have a situation where the when a farmer is going to make an application through the banks or through the financial sector wherever he's sourcing the funding you might find that when he is or he or she is not compliant the banker say you know this is risky where are you who's going to take your product without this particular compliant so primarily chair what i'm asking is have we looked at the implementation on the ground to just ensure that the farmers uh, that are vulnerable are covered when uh, you know this bill is being implemented or is being gazetted finally. Thanks, Chair. Honorable Memasho. Uh, good morning, Chair. I wonder if I'm audible because I've got a problem of net of network today here. But let me You're say good audible. Morning. We can hear you loud and clearly. Thank you very much. Good morning to you and uh, to the minister and all my colleagues on the platform, including all the officials of the department, uh, our DG. Uh, the presentation was very clear to me. And uh, the only uh, the sort of a, a follow, no, it will not be a follow up, it will be an addition to what the Honorable Masipa was talking about the logistical uh, support from the department with regard to the, the SA, with regard to the quality management system of those uh, uh, smallholders that are going to be assisted things like uh, policies that will uh, allow them if they are taught or helped or assisted with policies that will help them to be able to match the global market or the international markets. If the department has done that or they're busy doing that to those uh, farmers, that was just a, a little question that I have. Thank you very much. But otherwise, we appreciate uh, the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Memasho. Uh, the Honorable Ntate uh, Matias. Ntate Matias. Honorable uh, Briand. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, um, let me also maybe start with, with funding and cost implications. In the memorandum of the bill, the department stated that the cost implications to public entities and assignees, such as the PPECB and to the department, will be minimum. In the Socioeconomic Impact Assessment System report, the costs are said to be related to two additional employees, resourcing of the laboratory, training of staff on, on new procedures, creation of awareness to producers on the application and meeting the requirements of the bill. In this regard, and to ensure effective implementation of the legislation once passed, 
cost, the department should indicate whether it has the budget and the personnel capacity to carry out the additional responsibilities that will be brought um, by these proposed amendments. My second question would then be, what will be the specific cost implications to the PPECB and or other assignees um, and who will bear the costs thereof? Um, the third question, in the socioeconomic impact assessment system report, the department highlighted more benefits for the consumer in the form of quality and appropriate label products. Um, any cost implications for the consumer in light of the new audit requirements and possible additional fees that will be borne um, by producers of organic and free range agricultural produce? Um, if we can get clarity on that, Chairperson, I think then Honorable Masiba has co covered in terms of your, your small scale producers and the costing and, and the fees re regarding auditing I was worried about. Um, chairperson, and then maybe um, on Saturday, there was a Johannesburg, and it might not be specifically related to these amendments, but it does apply to the Act. And, and if you would allow me this question um, for the department, um, if they can, can maybe just, just answer. Saturday, there was a judgment in the Johannesburg High Court with regard to plant-based products. Um, it was with regard to a notice that was given out in June um, to, to plant-based producers such as ProVeg. Um, and I would like to just find out from the department, uh, will this bill impact that uh, or will this core judgment impact the bill rather um, has work been done with regard to this matter and how would it actually influence this um, and then maybe just as a last point um, taking into account um, the new European import regulations in terms of, of specifically citrus um, the bill with all of its amendments as, as we've seen in the past are we foreseeing that this will actually address our issues that we are currently experiencing as well? Chairperson, that is all from my side. Thanks. Thank you, Akbar Briet. Um, the Honorable uh, Mamutuete. Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning to the officials of the department and my fellow colleagues. Um, Chairperson, my question, my clarity has been covered on the issue of the, 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 the monitoring. Um, it's, it is straightforward, and the amendments are very, very clear. Uh, I don't have any clarity-seeking questions except the one of um, the monitoring of, of, of this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Tred. That is it. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Good morning to all members and the, the department staff uh, and, and the support staff from the portfolio committee. Chairperson, I, I don't think I have any question except to say one would be uh, uh, very comfortable if the department is, is, is going that route of making sure that uh, we, we eat organic products in order to have, you know, the, the challenge that we have been having of, of these uh, chemicals in, in, our, in our food stuff. Even the soil gets destroyed, only relies on, on, on these chemicals uh, for uh, 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 plant and, and, and food production. So the, 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 the presentation was very clear, Chairperson, and one, one will hope that we are going to maybe reach that uh, international standard of, of, of uh, getting our, 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 our consumers what is good for, for, for them, what is good for, for their lives. Thank you, Chair. The Honorable Bautaba. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, Chair, to you, to the Minister, and the Department, and all my colleagues. For me, Chair, it's just uh, two clarities. One is that uh, I did not, I was not able to go through the list of what was presented of the participants. But I, on this part, I'm simply interested on whether there has been a common understanding with the community groups, those people who definitely want to look after their specific products. 
where they look for the situation where the, the, the legislation is uh, in their interest or in their favor. So to get a clarity on that part. And also that if in the experience of the department in the process, were there any glitches or anything that maybe they feel that they might, they might be a problem in future. Just a clarity on those two things. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you, Honorable Kapa. Honorable members, is there any other honorable member on the platform who have not recognized, who may wish to pose a question? If not, uh, I will uh, also take the opportunity, honorable members, uh, to pose a question uh, with regards to the benefits uh, that the consumer or the improvements in the food quality regulatory system, which emphasis seems to be on the sale or export of agricultural products. What about the imported agricultural products and how does or how will the department verify the authenticity of an imported organic or free range agricultural product? Second one will be linked to what has been raised by Akbare Briet on the court case on the seizure of fake meat products which legislation is going to be responsible for labeling of agricultural products. Let us uh, hand back to the department. Ndate uh, Ramasodi, the DG of the department, and Ndate uh, Sarase, you may proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair. And let me also thank the questions and the comments that came from the honorable members. Um, as indicated earlier on, we have got a team here. Let's start with Mr. Malose uh, Billy Makafola, who's the director, then we'll go to Ndadesarache, and uh, I will end up in terms of the comments that the colleagues may have left out. Thank you very much, honorable chair. Uh, thank you very much, DG, and uh, a good morning to the chairperson and honorable members of this August uh, Portfolio Committee and other members who have just joined us. Uh, let me start off by uh, answering some of the questions. It has to be borne in mind that uh, the this is the amendment bill. The act exists as it is now. It is actually being enforced. So the cost implications that... Uh, uh, members are actually may actually be referring to may not necessarily be there necessarily because all of those activities that are pertains to control of export, control of imported products as well as controls that are there for products that are sold locally are actually being implemented currently. However, the only implication probably that is going to be coming in would be in the form of regulating those products that have been produced and, and uh, they are actually being sold with certain claims like your organic or free range. And, and in that space as well, it has to be borne in mind that there are private uh, standard uh, certification bodies that are actually uh, costing for those products to be certified. Uh, to be organic and all of this, and all of those things are using different different standards that have that that one cannot necessarily control. So, with the this bill actually being inserted into law, finally, if if that is going to be the case, it will actually assist in setting a minimum standard against which this method of production can actually be uh, audited, and that will actually afford the opportunity to all of those uh, farmers that necessarily do not have the means to contract private certification bodies uh, to authenticate their product. So if the department applies and set conditions that are generally known to everyone that if you are to claim organic, this is the standard that you have to uh, uh, accord with. If you are to say something is free range, these are the conditions that you are going to attach to. And we have to be uh, to also remember that we also have what we call geographical indicators, your garu, your garu meat, and, uh, and, and all of those things, they're not necessarily regulated. And once you have the methods of productions, you are halal 
actually coming into the equation. You then have the form of guarantee that we're going to give both to the producers of the product as well as to the consumers as to the authenticity of that product. You can guarantee without, without fail that this actually meets the minimum standard that has been set in terms of the Agricultural Product Act. So the actual implication is that more than anything, the cost will certainly be uh, reduced because uh, the different certification bodies that are going to be, that are actually charging exorbitant amount of money to ascertain that the products are, are either organic or free range, will certainly be something that is going to be coming out under control. So we don't, we do not actually anticipate the cost implication to ramp up because in any case, all of those products, as it is now for export, for all of those, all of those logistics, uh, are actually being carried out as we speak. The only thing that we are now bringing the management control system, which comes with it, auditing, and then we also have to look at the issue of the setting of fees by assigning that it is actually done transparently. There are certain assignees that have bought board representations, but those board representations are still designed to cover all of those products. You are like your grades, they are just uh, price takers. So by having a system where you're not going to have this bill, where before you actually come up with your fees, you then have to give us a, a business case or your, 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 your budget, that will then share with all of those people through a government gazette so that they can have their comments. And of all of those people who are not covered can then come into the picture. So there's transparency they also have input to make in terms of the a setting of fees. So we do not we do not expect uh, this thing to to actually escalate into into costs that may not necessarily be bearable to to our farming community. But that sets uh, every set so we also have the in the department we do have a directory that actually will be going out uh, to sensitize all and sundry that these are the changes that have actually come about and these are the changes that these are the kind of benefits that ought to be that are going to be eked from implementation of such systems. So we do not expect a cost cost escalation to be to be that much of a problem. The the other thing is that uh, I think I've actually answered the question of quality management system because as it is the only thing that is going to be happen is that method of production will certainly be the central point that is going to be covered. But it does not necessarily mean that currently we do not have products that have been sold under certain claims. And the only concern is that those claims are not necessarily brought under proper control through a regulation. But with respect to the issue that has been brought uh, by uh, Honorable Briata in terms of the cost implication to PPCB, we do not anticipate any cost implication because in any case, PPCB is already in that space or any other side for that matter. So the only thing is just for them to authenticate that indeed samples will be taken and all that if somebody claims something is, is organic, over and above uh, auditing their own management controls or auditing the organic uh, manner of producing, there'll also be samples taken to laboratory uh, to do some, carry out some tests to see that indeed uh, inorganic uh, fertilizers have not been used. And uh, the issue of uh, plant-based pro, uh, plant product, I think uh, we have actually seen the ruling. I don't know whether the, the, the ruling as it stands now, it has actually been given out, it's an interim order, uh, which has been given out with Rule DC, uh, returnable on the 17th of November. In other words, the department has to show cause as to why that interim order, with all of what this, uh, uh, consumer Goods uh, Council of South Africa is actually prayed for should not necessarily be, be made final. So as it is now, the inspection will certainly go on. Directions will be given for compliance of those uh, meat analogs or plant-based product to comply and stop using the names that are reserved for processed meat product. And uh, the seizure as it is, it, it is actually going to be held off until the 17th when the court rules otherwise. So we, the department accepts the, 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 the judgment as it is, and we are going to be complying with it. But that does not necessarily stop the assignee from seeing to be that the, the regulations on processed meat product is implemented and any other plant-based product that still evokes the names that are reserved for processed meat product are actually given directions to for them to be allowed the opportunity to change the label so that they cannot use names that are appropriated 
for processed meat product in the sale of plant-based product. And that, of course, is done precisely to, to ensure that there is level play, uh, the playing field in terms of uh, fair trade practices. But at the same time, you also have to ensure that consumers, of course, consumers are not necessarily misled. They actually know there are certain names that are associated with traditional with meat, uh, meat products. And if those names are now going to be advanced, are going to be used in order to advance the sale of plant-based product, that will actually be a problem. So we, the, the act essentially is trying to, uh, to see to either there's fair trade practices, but at the same time, consumer protection is actually ensured. So that actually, for the emerging farmers, it should actually be a very good thing because most of this uh, emerging farmers, most of them are not using uh, uh, chemicals or inorganic fertilizers or, or that they, they don't spray any pesticides on the product. So they should actually find a way of selling the product easier. So they would actually be afforded that opportunity to enter into the market space without necessarily having to incur cost or find barriers of compliance in that respect. Uh, that's why I'll end it, TG. Uh, uh, Thank you very much, honorable members. Um, um, uh, rising again on the already established uh, protocol, uh, if I understood well, the DG with the indulgence of the chairperson has lined us up. And I follow, I'm following, but I think uh, uh, Mr. Mkafala, the director responsible for the registrar, brother, also a director, has covered uh, most um, uh, part of the questions by the honorable members. But I'm just going through them quickly. The one by Honorable Tabe about the traditional leaders. This uh, honorable members got to do with the, I, I would presume, the, uh, uh, the legal services of parliament to advise, but I think it's got to do with how the bill is tagged. So that is the domain that will be so advised. But we stand ready if a need arises that we, we, we go as far as that, uh, presenting this presentation made at any sphere of government, we stand ready, we will be able to do that. Uh, Honorable Marshall, the quality management system by emerging farmers, I think that was uh, uh, addressed by uh, Mr. Makafula, except maybe in addition from me, uh, which says, the, in fact, this uh, uh, bill makes it easier for emerging farmers because then they don't have to uh, compete in an unfavorable situation where People uh, farm other farmers uh, who have the means produce and label uh, favorably their products and without the government uh, uh, watching over the situations. Now that we are watching over the situation, farmers, uh, emerging farmers who, whose production in the main might be uh, organic, they are then this would serve as a protection for them not to compete with others uh, who already have been established. Um, the Honourable, Honourable uh, uh, Briet, I think uh, the questions were sufficiently, in my view, addressed by uh, uh, Mr. Mkafula. Uh, Honourable Trete, the monitoring, again, this is not a new, oh, sorry, just a bit. Uh, Honourable Briet, I'm reminded now, when I'm up before I respond to Honourable Trete's question about the costs. Uh, the department has uh, capacity. In, uh, at the moment, and uh, the uh, monitoring or the, the enforcement of the this bill once uh, uh, sent it into law would really not uh, create any diversion. Member, uh, our inspectors would not necessarily have to uh, need any extra thing other than additional time, so so that uh, the department uh, does have uh, uh, resources on our period as per the, the uh, undertakings that we made in the CAP memo. So we, we do have uh, sufficient capacity to uh, enforce and monitor the bill uh, once uh, the act, once the bill is assented into law. Honorable Trete, again, apart on the monitoring, and I think we agree that's very critical, especially a new legislation coming into play. Uh, there will be those that uh, would try by mean, other means to bypass the new bill. We're going to ensure that we strengthen uh, uh, monitoring and ensures that uh, the law is then adequately enforced. Uh, so, so we we, are, we thank you very much for that. We know we are already uh, ready. We we uh, we are anticipating a situation where others will try and not uh, comply with the law. 
honorable Nkosi Tobekulu, organic production in the main, like uh, with that of honorable Maso. This uh, be act, when this bill once is uh, ascended into law, now makes it very clear and easier for us consumers to choose whether we want to eat organic or not. Because those that would be claiming organic or those that would be producing organically, they would then be able to uh, 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 be uh, uh, inspected and audited and uh, uh, certified that these are organic products. So when you go on the shelf at the, super, at the uh, store shop or a store or a supermarket, you are able to choose organic and this would be organic. So our farmers and emerging farmers and farmers in, in, in other spaces where they are currently producing organically as a result maybe of the high cost of fertilizers and pesticides, this is an opportunity for them not to be uh, to, to have to compete with those that have uh, better means. Uh, uh, Honorable Tapa, uh, on the understanding of all those uh, consulted, yes, uh, we can with certainty, Honorable Tapa and Honorable Members, uh, uh, affirm that uh, the all the, the, the parties uh, consulted have uh, co concurred with the process. In fact, they, 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 to them, it has been, it's been too long in the waiting. So they really do appreciate the, the government having to take this stance. In fact, we even went further to start uh, indicating to the uh, European Union and other uh, 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 countries that export uh, uh, foodstuffs to us that will be uh, enforcing this legislation. And also those have, uh, have really uh, accepted the move. Uh, Honorable Nkosi Mandela, uh, the question about the, the imported, in fact, maybe I went too fast and it's very, it's good that uh, Honorable Nkosi Mandela mentioned. Well, in South Africa, we subject all products produced in the country and at, uh, imported into a country, we subject them to the same law. So, those that are imported, uh, you see them on the shelf, uh, they are, they, we treat them as if they are produced here. Now, the, the, the Honorable Chairperson's question is, how do you then ensure that uh, you, you, these countries were uh, complied with, for instance, the auditing um, uh, system that we are introducing? Again, WTO rules uh, allow for countries, uh, the sovereignty to produce and have laws, but when they intend to export to other countries, they need to certify that they comply with the rules of the country to which they are exporting their product. In the same way as we do, when we, for, for Europe to accept our citrus uh, oranges, they accept that uh, we, we comply with their laws and our production systems comply with their, with their requirements. In the same way, we do require for uh, countries that are exporting to us, we require them to comply with our law. In this specific case, as mentioned, as asked by, uh, uh, and I think it's very important, as asked by Honorable Chairperson Minkos Mandela, the, the question is, we will, will we then be expecting of the, those exporting to our country to comply? Yes. And we'll also put in place uh, requirements and follow up and ensure that the competent authorities of those countries do actually comply. Uh, and, and on the basis of them not complying, we actually can reject uh, uh, consignment uh, coming from them. I think we, I hope we tried to, I think we answered all of them. Okay. Also, uh, Honorable Masipa, on the, the vulnerable uh, uh, farmers, I think uh, Mr. Kafla addressed that. But in the main, the, the current act, it actually does um, uh, support uh, production as it's currently been. And these new uh, amendments to the act would actually make the, the, the situation much better for vulnerable farmers because those that uh, would, have, would have been able to produce, you could imagine, as far as somewhere in the bubble, uh, they're producing uh, avocados or mangoes without fertilizers, without, uh, without uh, pesticides. That automatically, if we are to check on them, they would automatically become organic. So, so they don't necessarily have to do anything if their productions, uh, production sy systems have been uh, geared to or have been yes, geared towards uh, organic production.
DG, I think we try, we kept this what we've been able to capture and uh, an attempted response. So thank you very much, uh, uh, honorable members, for indulgence. Back to you, DG. Um, thank you very much, Ndati Sarahe, and um, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, maybe just to touch on the last aspect that uh, Mr. Sarahe had indicated, where Honorable Chair was asking whether imports would be regulated, and um, I think there is a legal issue that maybe we need to clarify that where we talk about exports and sale, it would mean that anything that is imported and intended for sale in our country would be subjected to um, what we do in terms of our lo local controls. And therefore, uh, whatever is imported would then be regarded in terms of that uh, insertion of the indication that is uh, intended for sale in our country. So sale uh, would also include those uh, that are imported. There were two questions that I thought that I should also uh, give emphasis to, and I think my colleagues have just done justice to those. The first one was around PPCB, and I think that it was um, Honorable Masipa, Honorable Briet, uh, who asked this question to say, how does this uh, impact on the current assignship? Um, and I would then assume that it's based on two issues, the multiple assigneeship that the department wants to give, and secondly, the impact in terms of the methodologies that we are bringing in or the risk adjusted approach that the department would like to bring in. And I would like to respond maybe to the multiple assignees that this will not have an impact in terms of PPCB and their mandate, but it also gives us leeway to get uh, as, uh, other assignees in other fields that are there uh, so that we can assure the consumers that uh, the food that they're eating in terms of quality are of the best quality. We have been doing that in terms of the uh, other assignees that we have got the space, including the court case that was taken on Saturday. Uh, the implementation was supposed to be done by an assignee of the department, but we wanted to broaden it up so that we can be able to look at the full scope uh, around quality control of agricultural products. The second issue was how this risk management uh, approach is going to assist PPCB. I think PPCB has been on record to say that um, the current model that we are uh, uh, addressing of endpoint inspection is actually uh, bringing a lot of uh, financial pressure on the organization per se. And they would have liked to have a risk adjusted approach where they would then do audits and be able to go on these audits and deal with the issues that are at hand. And I think it's also to, going to have an impact on our exports because um, I'll use, uh, for instance, the uh, different methods. If I know that citrus black spot uh, on a particular farm is prevalent, um, uh, using it from a quality point of view, not from a plant health point of view, I would be able to then say uh, my concentration would be on this farm and other farms. And as they uh, address the issues, around their quality uh, control systems, you would then be able to risk adjustedly deal with them differently from others that would be risky at that time. And I think that this also addresses the issue that was raised by Honorable Marshall on the systems that would be implemented. This would not only assist because it would actually lower the cost of a uh, compliance for different farmers because there's a lot that happens um, as an endpoint inspection only addresses an issue to say that all products would be inspected equally, notwithstanding the methodology that was done right through the system uh, up to the end point. So from my point of view, it will, it will lower the cost and uh, in terms of the uh, social impact assessment that we have done, we are confident that this is going to lower the cost and um, at uh, PPCB, this is something that they've been pining for. The, the, the last element was around Honorable Edward Kulu on the, on the organics. And I think uh, Didi Shisrahe has touched base on the issue. But I would like to uh, remind um, the Honorable uh, Members of the Portfolio Committee that initially, I think in the earlier years, we had tried to come up with uh, an organic policy 
uh, farming policy in the department, which um, we, we had tried to say, we are going to insert into the regulations of the Agricultural Product Standards Act um, a way of regulating organic uh, farming in South Africa, which was not allowed at that stage. And this is the time where we are saying we are trying to then bring this in alignment because in as much as there is a lot that we say we have got organic farming, but nobody um, would be able to say that it's regulated and we can be able to certify from a departmental point of view or through MNE to say there's organic farming. So we, not, we need to bring this in to line. Those were the issues that I thought um, I would just add, but the colleagues had already done a lot of ground on the areas. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, and Honorable Members of the PC. Thank you, Dr. Ramasodi, uh, DG of the Department of Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development, and also let's thank the officials of uh, the department for their responses. Honorable members, any follow-up questions? I see the end of uh, Honorable Datema Sipa. You may go ahead. Any other honorable members, please do raise your hands for those that wish to pose follow-up questions. You may proceed, Datema Sipa. Thank you, Chair. I think I must really again emphasize that I'm not against the bill, but um, I don't think, Chair, that I have been answered uh, primarily, you know, with regards to ensuring that uh, the, call it the communal or rural farmers, you know, uh, receive the, the support in ensuring that their produce um, get into the market because you don't farm um, and then later go look for the market. And the big challenge that we are facing now in rural areas is that with the growth of the shop rights and all these big retailers, is that farmers um, that are used to farming and go look for the market are struggling and they end up destroying their goods, their products, because their products are not certified already to uh, meet the requirements of the shop rights and the big supermarkets. So I just uh, really want to know if the department has got the capacity to actually assist these farmers, because uh, my engagements with many of them is that they are farming, they're planting cabbages, they're planting spinach, they cannot get them to the market. That's number one. The other point which uh, you raised, Chair, the, the legal case, um, yeah, I have to be honest that uh, I, I don't get the logic of the department uh, removing the products that are named um, with animal, uh, call it name of the beggar and so forth. Because, uh, and I just want to sketch this, Chair. You know, we've got geographical indicators where we use them, you know, to prohibit other countries from using our names like rooibos and so forth. Are there in agriculture, call it the agri names indicators that needs to be protected from being used for other reasons and so forth. Um, I, I just uh, really want to get some clarity there. The other question that I think I raised was um, around the assignees and cost implications. I know that you know we getting I get a feel that there is no cost implications, but uh, you know my feel is that you know the uh, if you look at the PCB, you know the they've been doing or call it the horticulture business this is geared has always been geared towards exporting and not necessarily you not know, doing the local market and they have always been compliant because of their export regulations and so forth but i do not think that we have been really very aggressive in the country in ensuring that you know the standards are met and i did dg did uh, allude to this fact that uh, when we were talking about the uh, the the fresh produce markets and so forth. So the question is, um, how many new assignees are going to be, you know, uh, be appointed and obviously assisting to ensure that the country is compliant? Because it's one thing good chair to get
get the importers complying to this and finding that our own country with our own local suppliers, we are not uh, uh, complying because we don't have enough assignee and we are not really able to execute. The last question, Chair, is around the imported goods. Are they, are they not in, you know, uh, anticipating any backlash like we have had with regards to the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the um, false court moths in uh, the EU? Uh, is there no uh, potential backlash regarding the imported goods because some countries might not be complying? I think the question is, uh, is the expectation that uh, all countries around the world will be complying and there will be smooth sailing in terms of implementing this particular bill? Thanks, Chair. Honorable members, any other follow-up question? If not, uh, let me uh, sponsor another uh, uh, follow-up question. Um, and I'm simply not sure if the question on labeling was answered to satisfaction. So I will uh, pose it again in terms of who's responsible for labeling of agricultural products. If we can gain clarity in that regard. But, but also it is mentioned uh, in the court case that Consumer Goods Council has argued that neither the Food and Safety Agency nor the Department of Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development have regulatory powers over the naming of fake meat products. Uh, can we gain clarity in this regard as well? Thank you. Over to you, DG and officials of the department. Uh, th thank you. Thank, thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair. My apologies. Um, let me try and switch on the camera again. Um, we really welcome the questions that have been asked, um, specifically from, from two, uh, two distinct points. One point in terms of enriching what we are um, coming up with, and the second point on the clarity that is needed. And I would like Ndade Makafola, if he can, um, just to outline the issue on the on the legal processes within the act itself, because uh, I am getting an indication that there might be a lot of um, issues that we need to share with the portfolio committee on the implementation of the act, because this court case is is, is because the department was implementing the act. I will uh, outline the issues around the engagements that um, are there on the cost of compliance and, and what we are doing as the department to address that uh, the small scale farmers are compliant to uh, the marketing requirements that we have as a department and the quality requirements. So if you can just have that um, in the very same line with the Demacafola, and then I'll, I'll finish up in terms of the issues that are there. Thank you, the uh, PC again for the question. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Let me start off with the issue of, of plant-based or meat analogs and uh, why the uh, sort of prohibition of of plant-based product or meat analogs uh, for them not to use uh, names that are reserved for processed meat product. In 2019, we actually published a regulation that talks to processed meat product. Along with that uh, regulations, there were classes and standards for each and every product names associated with those standards and classes. Now, if you have that published and prescribed, because the act says that if something is prescribed, it's by regulations, and the regulations still existence. And the consultation went broadly. We actually evolved the plant-based uh, uh, producers, plant-based product or plant-based meat pro producers to say that uh, this is the regulation that is actually going to be regulating. And in the very same regulation, we actually made it very clear that meat analogs are not regulated. They are not regulated. But it becomes an issue when such products which are not regulated are then going to be using names 
that are reserved, that are prescribed. You have standards, you have classes for those names in the process to be product. Essentially, what you are then saying is that you are then inviting the inspector to use the very same standard because remember, inspection goes in terms of the claims, labeling of the product. The labeling of the product itself suggests that you then have to look at whether that product meets the standard that has been stipulated for that very product name. So once you have those names, you are then inviting the application of process to meet product, to apply to that product. So you're inviting the inspectors to say that, let's go and authenticate that indeed this uh, mushroom uh, build dog is really a build dog. And then we're going to use the standard of, of, of process to meet product because it has been prescribed for for Piltong. Piltong has a standard and classes for that. So this is what is happening. You cannot, the example is like this. If you have water, you cannot suddenly say that I'm having water that looks and tastes like a, a wine, therefore I'm going to call it water shadow day. The standard of shadow day, they don't, you are certainly trying to adulterate the market for, the, for, for shadow day. The same thing that if you are actually advancing the sale of plant-based product, no problem. But use whatever name that will certainly accord. The nomenclature, the, uh, the, your, your naming convention has to uh, resonate with the plant-based product, not necessarily uh, try to uh, chip into the market that is already established and that is regulated for pro processed meat product. That's where the problem is. And of course, that is a legal question that is still going to be ventilated in, uh, in court. And in that respect, we have not, as the department, the... I mean, the, there was only one um, uh, one site. That is why an interdict was given, and the, there's a returnable date. So on the 17th of November, we will then be able to to show to show cause as to why are we saying that these products are fine. We make common cause. They are not regulated. But once you are not regulated, do not necessarily use names that are regulated to advance the sale of your product. That becomes a problem. That is where we are. And in fact, we cannot necessarily go deeper than that. That is, that is essentially what is actually attracting the whole attention to uh, the prohibition of the use of names that are prohibited and that are highly, highly regulated for the meat processed product. Because for the meat processed product, for them to sell the product as such, they are going to be, those products are actually um, uh, inspected and tested for compositional properties, whether they actually meet the set standard. And the same has to happen when you invoke the names that are, are prescribed for this product, be it plant-based or call it meat or not. But essentially, if you don't say, you don't use those names, it remains unregulated. It remains as such you don't have any interest in that product. And uh, I think, TG, that's where you wanted to, uh, for myself to limit my, my scope to. But if I may go to the imported product and the claims that are that I actually use that, are we not going to be invoking or are we not going to be attracting the same eye? I don't think so, because what is happening now, it is something that has been happening internationally. We all that we are trying to do is to harmonize specifically management control system with what is actually been happening. There are international uh, standards on, on, on how to regulate methods of production. So we are actually following following through. In fact, we, we had it wrong in 2005 when we thought that the management control system, because it has to be borne in mind that management control system existed in the amendment of 1998, but the, the manner in which we captured it was wrong in that it was, it was found to be wide enough. It was uh, principle of production, principle, uh, uh, principle of production from uh, primary production up to the same. So it is wide as it gets. So we had to re to to limit it so that we actually talk to methods of production. That's what we essentially have done here. So, but the, this actually has been a, in the, I mean, internationally, that has been practiced uh, from 2005, uh, if if I remember correctly. And internationally, those those methods of production are regulated. So we will actually be following in line. So there's nothing that nothing unto what except that even even if there is something untoward the regulations that will be regulating methods of production will be notified with the WTO for member states to comment on those regulations so we wouldn't necessarily catch them unawares and uh, I think the, the other question the TG undertook to to respond to that that's where I will end things
Mr. Saraka, do you have any responses before we conclude and give over to the Honorable Chair? Yes, uh, just a quick one. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, PG, and to, to Honorable Members for the opportunity once again. I think, uh, uh, Honorable Masipa, the question about the, the assistance that the Department offers to the uh, emerging farmers, and there's this, uh, and I know the uh, Honorable Masipa knows it, and the members, agricultural production, the farming, and as it becomes business, uh, it means uh, there's a slogan they use in that space that uh, don't, if you, ha if you haven't sold it, don't farm it. That is, don't produce it. What, what this means is that uh, it, it goes very uh, well with what the Honorable Masipa is asking, which is uh, how do we ensure and how does the department assist uh, farmers to comply with the, the, the quality dictates of the, the supermarkets. And that may not necessarily be the responsibility of this branch of the department, but there are other branches that whose, whose, dream, uh, uh, whose job is development, uh, which is production. You would, uh, the members would also understand that the minute we go in that space, when we actually are regulating that space, it will actually be a, a some, to some extent a conflict of interest. But we're speaking here as a branch, the regulatory part of the department, mindful that there is a development part of the department whose sole intention is to advance, the, to help the emerging farmers to advance to levels where they are able to meet the quality dictates of the job right and all of those supermarkets. So we, 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 we are going into this work, honorable members, uh, knowing very well that uh, the farmers have got to be assisted to comply with this. Uh, and Honorable Masipa goes further to say, then we need to be able to help them with certification. And again, uh, I think Mr. Mukafla also touched on it. We, we, they, they, they we're simplifying, actually, the process of inspection instead of, uh, like the DG said, endpoint inspection where you are able to produce everything and come the time when you want to sell, we say, oh, oh the we then check. So this one would be risk-based, so would be uh, uh, producers who would have been found to produce meeting the requirements, may not necessarily be frequently inspected, but there will be checks and uh, on the base of risk, but at the same time, um, the, 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 if a need arise for us to assist specifically, that is to, to make the, to simplify the application, which is what I think Honor Principal was emphasizing on. If they need, they need a rise uh, uh, also from our sister branch uh, on the development of the provincial department, if a need arises for us to simplify the, this, uh, uh, the law, this new law, to those uh, emerging farmers, we'll definitely uh, do that uh, we'll, to ensure that they understand how to comply, which is, I think, that will be helpful. And then the assignee. As additional costs, no, that DG touched it on it, and I think he will, uh, as when he wraps up, he will get to that. The Honorable Chairperson, Gwesi Mandela, the, the, okay, before that, it was still, sorry, my, my, but uh, Honorable Masipa again on the, uh, 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 the backlash. Are we anticipating any backlash? No. In fact, the countries, uh, Europe in the May, that uh, are exporting, uh, alternatives, or if we're talking about the alternative or uh, product or organics, they have already far advanced. They actually have, with the Europe specifically, they have, have even a more stringent uh, green policy that they are busy uh, uh, rolling out. So, so they, sh they should be able to comply. So we don't anticipate any black backlash. And like I said, the trade of agricultural products uh, is regulated at the WTO already established laws and rules which uh, make us uh, as a country to respect and recognize the, the capacity of the competent authorities of other countries. And as we expect other countries to accept that when we say this is um, um, organic, the country that we export to has got to just uh, check with us and, uh, uh, and confirm with us and uh, the products that attempt organic from South Africa, they will be so accepted in the same way we are expected to do the same. We need to, if any that arises though, for us to go out to that country and double check, we, we stand ready. We've got the means and ways of double, of, of ensuring that uh, where the claims are, as uh, much as we do for 
local production we've got the capacity and uh, of, of of going to ensure that the claims made are indeed uh, authentic uh, so 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 we don't expect any backlash on our and members uh, labeling of uh, greek uh, products uh, that question the our law uh, specifies and uh, that's what uh, also mr mcafra touched on the labeling uh, of products uh, you most of you might be seeing when you look at it box of oranges, there's a lot of things at the box, on, but on the other side, on the long side, you see labeling, which is a, a statutory labeling. So products are required, uh, the pro producers are required to ensure that the correct labeling and to, and as part of labeling also, as and when they make uh, quality claims, they've got to, co to comply with the law, the uh, applicable provisions of this law. So, so we regulate the labeling of the products that we regulated. Not all products, but like I said earlier, in the basket of food of the, in the main, I think 90% of food is regulated by this act. And we then set the requirements for labeling. So it is our responsibility and uh, enforcement thereof of labeling uh, of products. Uh, I guess I, I, in an attempt to respond to the question by Honorable Chairperson Nkosi Mandel. Uh, so I hand back over to you, DG. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Honorable Chair, um, let me uh, conclude on the few issues that I had indicated we, we needed to conclude on. And let me start off with um, Honorable Masipa on the impact that you are going to have and assignship on how broad are we going to go with assignship. If we look at the uh, management control systems, at this moment we don't have um, any assignee that's operating in the space. Where we have got assignees is within the issue around the endpoint inspections, and we have got seven assignees that are there, which includes uh, PPCB as one of the assignees in terms of the agricultural products, uh, standards. And so what's going to happen with the, the new system? It will be opened up to those qualifying um, uh, service providers who will be able to do that. And PPCB, if they have got that capacity, would also be eligible to enter and see how best they can then stretch their revenue streams from that level uh, going forward, because that would be another level in terms of expertise and expectations from government to implement. I would like to also indicate that when it comes to the assignees, um, government is very close in terms of what the assignees are doing and where an assignee cannot do a particular a task that was uh, afforded or accorded by the minister, then the minister can um, then uh, take uh, over the delegation that was given to us in ship, and we are doing that uh, as a matter of um, engagement. Uh, Honorable Mandela, um, the the issue that Ndadesara had indicated that if you haven't sold it, then don't farm it, is something that we we, we are working with the farmers to, to make the basis understanding. And Honorable Masipa will also understand that um, that's the basis in terms of engagement. So that these days, in actual fact, uh, products are sold before even they are planted so that you can have uh, arrangements with uh, the places where you sell them. But noting that we come from a history where this is not always practiced. The very same unit that uh, um, is presenting here today has got a unit called promotion and awareness who are going out to the farmers indicating what the requirements are. We also have got the uh, marketing unit that does the, the work around marketing, but all in all, we also have got the SHEP program, which is the small horticulture empowerment uh, program of the department, which was um, launched by the minister. Uh, where this very same concept is a concept that the department is doing. And similarly, um, we would like to also extend it to other areas of our work. So those are the interventions that we are having to make sure that we can be able to say that the farmers are producing what they are going to sell. The, the last engagements that we had on the um, food systems in preparation for the food summit there is an insertion point um, that was indicated earlier in that in that discussion document, uh, which now is going to be implemented. And I think that's where we need to refocus the work of the department is that we should uh, produce what we consume. And that issue around localization of food systems, 
is an issue where we are going to ensure that this concept is going to be entrenched in terms of our farming to ensure that farmers produce um, those uh, that we can consume locally and ensure that we are less reliant, um, especially on non-niche uh, products, uh, on exports, as you have seen the, um, the, the, the current levels in terms of volatility that we are dealing with with our exports. That's very important for us to, to then start off with marketing of products and ensuring that our production is aligned with uh, our local consumption. And that is also entailed in the um, current system that we're having on um, our poultry master plan and also on the agriculture and agro-processing master plan. The, 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 there is this element that um, uh, Honorable Mandela has also asked, who, who is responsible for labeling? That Mr. Rafa puts it at 90% in terms of labeling. But I would like um, to request Honorable Members to also recast on this issue around labeling and the issues that were there um, in discussion when we discussed the integrated uh, nutrition, uh, food, food nutrition um, and security program, uh, if I didn't get the, the line in light in terms of the names. But um, it deals with food security and nutrition, and that is housed in the presidency. One of the issues that was there was how do we get our food control system to be one, because when you deal with labeling, while the majority may be with the Agricultural Product Standards Act in terms of the quality of the products, there are other labeling mechanisms that come in that might not necessarily be housed here. They may be housed with the Meat Safety Act. They may be housed with the Agricultural Pest Act in terms of irradiation of honey products. They may be housed elsewhere. Um, in other departments, including uh, with the Consumer Protection Act, they may be housed with a, a Food Disinfectants and Cosmetics Act. So you have got quite a lot of multiple players in terms of the labeling of products in our country. And uh, one of the areas that we thought was very important was to come up with a food control agency or even a food control system to deal with that, which uh, currently is being led from a present point of view. So labeling, um, to um, summarize, is covered, uh, it's multidimensional depending on the act under which that labeling um, is being implemented. And therefore, uh, the reflection is that you would have quite a lot of these products being covered under the Agricultural Product Standards Act, but that is not the only act. There are a few other acts that have got labeling on agricultural products, and currently there is work that is being done around the food control system in our country. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Thank you, uh, on Ntade Ramazodi, the DG in the Department of Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development. Let us also thank the officials of the department for their responses, Ntade uh, Serache, as well as Ntade Mahavor, for adequately responding to our questions. Uh, honorable members, uh, we will uh, take uh, the bill into our major management committee meeting for further processing and uh, revert back uh, to the committee in terms of uh, what the way forward will be. We want to therefore thank uh, all the officials of the department, the DG, the Deputy Ministers and the Honourable Minister Mamouti Diza for their participation and uh, for the presentation that has been put before the committee uh, on the bill. Uh, we will now, Honourable Members, move to our Portfolio Committee uh, minutes of the meeting we had on the 7th of June, 2022. Page one. Page two.
page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. Thank you, honorable members. Um, can we have a mover for the adoption of the minutes of the 7th of June, 2022? Honorable Member Asho. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, Patricia, might move for the adoption of the minutes of the uh, 7th June as a full picture of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Member Asho, for moving for the adoption of the minutes. Honorable members, can we have a second for the adoption of uh, the minutes? Uh, Honorable Ndade uh, Masipa. I, I move uh, to second uh, the adoption of the minutes of the 7th June 2022. Thanks. Thank you, Ndade Masipa. Uh, seconds the adoption of uh, the minutes um, accordingly. Honorable members, any matters arising? Page one. Page two. Page three. Chair. Honorable Ndate Masiba on page I see, three. I see Memato's hand is up. Memato, is that a legacy hand? Or you have a matter arising? Sorry, sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. It was forgotten. All right. Thank you. Chair, can I go to page three? All right. Go ahead. Uh, Chair, on page three, we kind of raised quite a number of questions as members of the committee. And maybe, Chair, what we need to do is um, consider a follow-up with regards to around these questions. I do not think that uh, while many could may, may have been answered, uh, questions around the implementation plan, uh, I think is something that we need to follow up with the department. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, uh, Dr. Masipa. Uh, we'll uh, look into that as I uh, do recall that we had requested that the department should also furnish us uh, with written responses. Uh, if we have uh, received them, we will make sure that they are circulated amongst honorable members so that uh, we can be able uh, to have that info uh, shared with yourselves. Uh, still on page three, honorable members, any matters arising? Page four. 
page four. Page five, page six, Thank you, honorable members. With no matters arising, the minutes of the 7th of June, 2022, have been truly adopted. That brings us to the end of our uh, session, honorable members. And uh, as we've exhausted our agenda items, uh, we want to take this opportunity to thank uh, you all, honorable members who have been able to attend uh, this uh, session, but also thank all our staff uh, that have been able to make uh, this meeting possible as uh, uh, the workers in the background will enable us to be able to uh, have uh, these sessions and get the work uh, of uh, Parliament of the Republic of South Africa done. Uh, we would want to thank all our guests that have been able to participate uh, in listening and uh, going through uh, the bill uh, with the Portfolio Committee. We thank uh, the ministry, its leadership, as led by the Honorable Minister Togo Titeza, the Deputy Ministers, the DG, and the officials of the department who uh, were able to uh, take us through the bill and uh, participated in today's meeting. Honorable members, we wish you well in the rest uh, of uh, the day's uh, proceedings and the week ahead. Uh, we uh, wish you uh, all the best as uh, we get this third term of uh, our parliamentary program underway. The meeting stands adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member So I see uh, your home. Uh, our uh, not anymore. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Mom Chete. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Tatema Sipa. Bye.